It is time for my monthly palette rankings where I line up all of the palettes that I tried in the month of August and I rank them from worst to best. I tend to do these towards the middle of the month just so that the palettes that I tried at the very end of the previous month, I can like test them more and make sure. I'm feeling relatively confident in these rankings. It was a light month. I only have eight palettes to rank, but let's go ahead and get into it. Starting off with eight, the worst palette that I tried this month. So for me, that is going to be the Maybelline Shadow Block in the shade, I don't know, the neutral one? I can't find the name of this. Oh, North 3rd and Bedford Avenue. I kind of, when I bought this, knew I wasn't gonna like it because I typically don't like drugstore eyeshadows, but I just wanted to give these a chance. They also look like potential to be dupes for my Kaja trios, not even close. So how this works is there's three layers of shadow. So we have a matte cream shade, a shimmer gold, and then this dark shade right here. This is just an awful, awful palette. It really is a testament to why I don't like drugstore. Look how deep the dark shade in this trio is. It swatches to nothing. It blends out to a super extremely light shade. If you're very fair or just in general, you don't like a lot of pigment, I think you will enjoy this. The shimmery gold shade just wipes right off my eyelid. It doesn't really stick, you know. The matte shade, the cream, it's fine, but it just has that really silica kind of feel to where it kind of just doesn't stick to the eyelid, you know. It doesn't last long at all. It fades so quickly. So all in all, Pretty much everything I don't like about an eyeshadow is what this palette possesses. It's one of the worst shadows that I've tried this year, honestly. Don't recommend this. Big, big, big disappointment. Definitely feels like a really, really cheap eyeshadow palette. And, and by the way, before you ask, I don't have like the new Natasha Denona palette in this rankings because I tried it in September, not August. So I always get asked that, so that's why. <laughs> so number seven, this I would say is the last of the bad palettes. This is the Too Faced Better Than Chocolate palette. I did recently try another palette from Too Faced. That's going in the September as well, but this is a Too Faced palette that I tried for the month. I was really excited because Too Faced, you know, they revived their iconic chocolate palettes. And what I need to know is were they really this bad back in the day? I mean, I know makeup has evolved over time, but were we working with this quality? <laughs> so overall, I would say it's like, it's not a terrible palette. It's totally workable. You can get very beautiful makeup looks with this, but I find the quality of this to run inconsistent throughout the palette. Some shades are chunky and flaky, some shades lack in pigment. You know, they're decent enough to where you can finesse them to work. You're gonna get a pretty look. The mattes are fine, they blend fine, but like this shade right here is already getting hard panned. You can hardly pick up anything from it to begin with. It's just really inconsistent, ooey gooey, it's gonna get all over your face. I mean, it's a, it's a wild card as to what experience you're going to have when you apply this. I would say since it's in the high-end category, you know, it's not terrible quality, but for the price that you pay for this, and for what I know Too Faced has the potential to create, this is not good. This is a below average formula, even for them. So yeah, I mean, if you are truly living, dying, breathing for these colors, you'll absolutely be able to make the colors work. You can't go wrong with these brown shades, you know? But if we're talking in terms of we want a nice, good quality neutral palette, there are thousands of eyeshadow palettes that I recommend over this one. So this one was very disappointing for me. And it doesn't even smell strong enough of chocolate. You know how back in the day when they do their fragrance palettes, you'd open it and they'd smack you in the face with the smell of deliciousness. I liked that. I know some of you are against that and I liked it. Um, we don't have that in this one. <laughs> I want to smell chocolate when I open it. Moving up to number six. It, it gets good over here. I really like this palette. This is just where it fell because we had some good ones towards the top. So this is the ColourPop Play It Cool palette. Hear me out, this palette is awesome from ColourPop. It's one of my favorites. There's a few caveats to it that I will share, but overall, this is a great dupe for the Patrick Ta Major Dimension palette. I don't care for the cream shadow in here, but everything else works beautifully. The shimmers, they feel really beautiful and creamy. They just don't stick to the eyelid like I would like. So that is why this is ranking lower because you get kind of a mess when you apply the shimmers. It's interesting because ColourPop shadows, typically they don't stick to the eyelid the greatest, the shimmer shadows, but these feel a little creamier than the ones that I'm used to from ColourPop. So these are a little better, but they still don't have 
have that stick. So it's best to apply it with a glitter glue or tilt your head back, pretty much laying down applying this or it's gonna be a mess. But these do have a nice creaminess and like pigment level to them. So when you do apply it, it does look really pretty. It's just the application is very messy. So that's the only fault in this palette. The mattes are absolutely gorgeous. This is a stunning palette from ColourPop. It's a phenomenal price for what you get. So if you're interested, I do highly recommend this. It's just that one problem that I have with the shimmers, which I think is a pretty big problem, but it's a gorgeous palette. I definitely do recommend it, especially at the price point. It's what I'm wearing right now. So let me show you quickly how I got this look. It was very easy. I started off with the shade Body Talk all over my crease. That's kind of the base shade for today's whole look. And then I went into Killing It right here, which is a little deeper, a little bit more warm. And I applied that more to the outer corner of my eye, it blended really, really beautifully, no skipping whatsoever, super easy to work with. And then I went in with the shade Aphrodite, which is the darkest shade. It doesn't pull as dark as I would love, but it still is very nice. It works great as eyeliner from other looks that I've tried in the past. It's a very nice shadow. And then I went in with High Fire, which is this really light creamy shade. It actually pulls darker on the eyelid. It is a matte shade. I wish it was just a wee bit lighter because I did want it to kind of brighten the eyelid a bit more, but still it's a nice pigmented shadow. Nothing bad to say about that. And then I finished with Mud Pot right here, which is the shimmer shade. You'll see I had to tilt my head back and really press the shadow in to make sure it wasn't going anywhere. Inevitably, I, I still got some fallout from that, but overall I really do like this from ColourPop and I highly recommend it if you're into the color story. So number five is from Huda Beauty. This is the new Love Fest palette that came out. Again, hear me out. It's a really, really good palette. So I actually have found myself using this quite a lot. I've been very impressed with this palette. This is one of my favorite obsessions palettes that Huda has come out with in a very long time. Mattes are blendable, the shimmers are gorgeous, and the looks are very to my taste. I love that play on orange and purple, the cool to warm kind of effect. I think it creates a beautiful kind of sunset -y look, sunrisey, whatever. Very, very gorgeous palette palette overall. Nothing bad to say about it. I'm just ranking it on the lower side because it is a rendition of the same palette that Hood has kind of launched over and over again. I was able to pinpoint like three or four palettes that I could literally dupe this palette into. So that's a personal thing based on what's in my own collection, but this is also like a personal ranking. This is where I would rank it. So the palette is great. If you love the color story, absolutely go for it. But if you do carry a few Huda palettes, maybe check out my review just so you can make sure you don't already own this color story. Number four is from ColourPop. This is the Matte About Hue palette. This is a banger. I really love this. So this is an all matte eyeshadow palette. It is a dupe for the hundred something, hundred fifty dollar Viseart Grande Pro 3 palette. So obviously this is not for everybody, but this is a great base shade, base look kind of palette. So I've worn the warm shades quite a lot. I've dabbled into the cool tone shades. I like the quality of these a lot. ColourPop has a really good matte formula for the price. They can be messy, but they blend out so beautifully. They carry a lot of great pigment. Just overall an easy palette to work with. For the price point especially, it's impressive. This is great to just have in your collection as a just-in-case palette. Just just in case you ever need these colors, you have them all in here. I've been enjoying playing with this. I've been reaching for it a lot and then popping into that individual shadow drawer that I don't reach into a lot to put something really glimmery and shimmery on the lid, like maybe one of my ColourPop Super Shock shadows, one of my liquid eye shadows. So this actually has gotten a lot more use than I had originally anticipated. The quality is really great. So if there is a hole of matte rainbow shades in your collection and you feel like you kind of want it just in case, this is great because it's not gonna break the bank. It's really high quality and I mean it's a great palette to experiment with and play with in your bedroom at night just to see what you can do. It has about every colorful shade that you're gonna need so I've been pleasantly surprised by this. Highly recommend it. Ooh, number three was a shocker. Talk about a gorgeous palette. This is definitely going to be one of the best mainstream high-end palettes launching this year for the holiday season. This is the Tarte Man Eater ad after dark, right? Yeah, Man Eater After Dark palette. Can't tell you the last time I picked up a Tarte palette. 
Well, I guess I can. It was a while ago, and I can't tell you the last time I liked a Tarte palette because that was really years ago. So this is just unlike anything Tarte has ever launched before. I know the color story is not super unique, but honestly, I think it's unique in the Tarte line, and the formulas are quite different. If you ask me, the mattes blend beautifully. The shimmers are shocking. I mean, they are metallic, like foiled, can be a little messy, but still stunningly gorgeous. Can be also a little overly creamy, so keep that in mind. And the mattes just work great. I am so impressed with this palette. Again, it's gonna be one of the most popular palettes this holiday season. I know some of you said you were bored with the color story. I mean, sure, yeah, we've seen these colors before, but you just get so many. The quality is really great, and not everybody has the giant collection that us YouTube watchers have, so I think this is gonna make a phenomenal gift, and it truly is such a good quality palette. I am so impressed that Tarte had this up their sleeve. I, I didn't know that they could do it, but they did it. That was so great. I did do a full review on this. If you want to see me absolutely shocked, head over to that. <laughs> Number two, I'm so excited. So this is, I believe Nomad is already coming out with another launch, but Nomad launch, I believe this is the, oh, from Costa Rica. This is their Costa Rica palette. If you don't know, Nomad Cosmetics is an indie brand and I love their color stories. I've been open about, you know, not necessarily loving all of their formulas that they do. I am so happy to announce I've used every single shade in this palette. I love all of the shades. For me, quality-wise, this is my favorite quality from Nomad Cosmetics. I think they knocked it out of the park. It's definitely out of my comfort zone. This is not a palette that I'm reaching for for every day, but every look that I've created has been so bright and colorful and has just lifted my mood. I love the shimmers that they added. I think they look gorgeous, and it actually is quite a cohesive palette. I've been able to create looks very easy without thinking too hard, so they did a really great job with this. And look, there's a monkey imprint on this. Isn't that so cool? So if you like this color story, I definitely recommend it. I think it's a great one to kind of step out of your comfort zone as well. Nomad did a great job with this palette. I love this one, so definitely one of the best that I tried this month. And ladies and gents, that leads me to the number one spot, the best palette that I tried this month. And I'm ranking it also at number one because it's just my ideal everyday color story. It's that glam neutral look where, you know, it's in the boring tones, but they're extra amped up. So that is going to be the Glaminatrix Nearly Natural Palette. Glaminatrix is another indie brand because indie brands kill it with eyeshadows. Whenever I try an indie brand eyeshadow palette, they always are pushed towards the top of my rankings. You can't tell me that this color story does not scream Morgan Hope Turner, okay? There are mauvey purpley tones, green tones, neutral tones, leaning warm, shimmery, glimmery eyelid shades. This is me in a palette right here. And the quality is so, so good. The mattes take a little bit of building up, but I'm not I'm not bothered because they're quite easy to blend and they're easy to build up as well. And that gives you a little bit of wiggle room as well, especially if you're a beginner with eyeshadows. And the shimmers are just a glimmery, shimmery goodness. The only flaw to the palette, I would say, is some of the shimmers, listen to this, because they're so reflective, they maybe don't differentiate from one another as much as I would like. But at the same time, I'm not going to complain about how gorgeous and reflective they are. So everything about this palette is pretty much right up my alley ads if you've been wanting to experiment with indie brand shadows because I remember back in the day I used to be not interested in indie brands at all I would be like Ugh, for no reason I don't know why but anyways then I finally tried indie and I realized oh they're like better than the mainstream brands they really are a lot of love goes into these palettes and you can totally tell so indie for the win this month they killed it Tarte also came in underdog over here with a shocker just a really good month only two legitimate not good palettes and top six were just banging. So I hope you guys enjoyed this month's ranking and found it helpful. Let me know if you've tried any of these palettes and your thoughts. Do you agree with me? And if there are any palettes that you want more details about just to see if I've used them in a video, just type in the palette name and then Morgan Turner at the end and the video should show up. So yeah, make sure you like this video and are subscribed to my channel and I will catch you in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.